I really want to talk about leadership with you today, Sonia. Oh, good. I'm so honored to be here, Anna. Oh, fantastic. I love it. I think that the work you do around leadership is kind of unique. And I think that the leadership work that you do with women is actually not just one of a kind and not just a marketing spiel, but I feel that it's almost a vision for your business, but also the behavior, the attitudes, and almost like the level of boldness that you live every day. Oh, and thanks. Yeah, this is just how I see it from sitting from probably outside of the screen and uh, knowing you personally as well. Oh, thanks. And me. I find that the way you also help with leadership or teach leadership is more about the specific leadership women have, like aligned leadership with who they really are, not like hashtag empowerment or um, leadership, thought leadership, or you have to say this, you have to wear a suit. Like it's a very unique personal leadership, also almost like a custom one, which I think opens up many other areas of that work for that reason. But because it's aligned to true self-leadership, it's very profound. And I really wanted to share the taste of that, how you feel about it, how you see it, and what's, what's involved in that. And as a social media strategist, I often help people showcase that leadership they have. And very often I don't take clients to work with when I feel like they're not, they haven't quite grasped that leadership they have. It's just not quite strong or it's very templated. And then I feel that it's, um, it's very difficult to use online technologies to showcase, to like shine, to, to really stand out. And it's also very common that people feel that social media, and they actually really feel it a lot of the times, that social media can create that leadership, like push it and make it, make it shine and make it stand out. And I don't think it works that way. In fact, I see that it's not working that way and it's not what creates the leadership. And I want to be clear that social media is actually a strong and very powerful tool to showcase that and as a result influence people's behavior or affect their behavior or really power what you want to create with the help of that leadership what you stand for what you believe with that in and that alignment but it's just social media doesn't create it it's not really okay. and I think that the belief and the feel is that it is creating it but I feel it's other way around, something else first. So I've got a few areas that I want to explore today and we'll see if we have time for all of them or we'll just look at some most important ones. So Sonia, I really want to ask you first, what is leadership for you? And what is, if at all, important to talk about it actually? Mm, I love it. Look, I love this topic. You know, I've been just rolling out a leadership program. I think the way that I define leadership, I think the world sees leadership as how we lead people, how we influence people, how we, you know, get them to do what we want. Like, I think that is a lot about how people see leadership. And so it's usually about how do we communicate? How do we inspire others? How do we motivate others? But oftentimes there's this edge of how do we control others? How do we manipulate others? How do we get them to do what we think they should do? Whereas I see leadership as us standing more and more in our own power, in our own integrity, in what we stand for or stand against. And when we stand in our own power, what happens is that we're really able to become a leader. And being a leader allows us to have more influence, allows us to have more impact. But it's not because we're influencing people or getting them to do what we want or getting them to follow us or telling them what they should think. It's because just by being who we are, they're inspired. And that's a very different way to come at leadership, I think, than what traditional leadership programs or what traditional sort of leadership things teach. Um, it's much more about who are we, how do we stand in our power, how do we become our best potential in order to inspire people. Mm, but that then requires knowing that. It literally requires knowing Mm -hmm. I? I've heard a lot of times people saying that, but how can I showcase that I do this? How is that my leadership? But it's almost like something else. It's not really what they do as such. Is it? Or? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, really what it is, is it is about knowing who we are and it's about knowing what we stand for, right? So, you know, what are our values? And every mm -hmm. business person, leader, you know, thought leader, political uh, person, all of them, everybody has that ability to understand and share what our values are. And when we do that, we're able to step in that leadership. I mean, there's some really interesting definitions I've explored around leadership. And, and one of those is like the capacity to lead. And the other one is the, you know, basically standing in our moral integrity and being an example of that moral integrity. Right. And so I always found that was such a really interesting definition because that requires us to know what our values values are and it requires us to reconcile that with who we actually are being and that's the real work right so i talk a lot about integrity or congruity so so many people you see in the world today and especially in thought leadership or in in the way they're trying to be in their branding or in social media they're trying to be this but they're actually back here being this there's a gap between who they want everybody to think they are and who they actually are and what happens is the world can feel that. There's a, there's a feeling of something just not being quite right or them not being fully authentic, but that's very different than the leaders you see who you know are like congruent, right? There's a congruency between who they are being and who they actually are. And that I think is really inspiring and powerful. You know, and the other definition that I've explored as well is around the capacity to lead. See, sometimes, we're pushing ourselves to lead, we're you know, exhausting ourselves to lead, but really mm -hmm. there's something about having that capacity to lead, that space to lead, and you know, knowing who we really are and allowing ourselves to be in our power, that allows for a lot more leadership. Mm. And I feel the importance then almost feels like in, in that alignment as well. It's not just influencing people, it's really doing the work you 100% believe in and, and you feel. That yeah. would definitely change what it even looks like or how it appears in social media. And so yeah. I love that. What would you think would be the first step to start exploring that, to becoming a leader if one decided mm -hmm. to? Uh, well, definitely the first step is the self-development piece or the awareness of who you actually are and what you even believe in. I mean, it's interesting because so many women, I mean, I focus on leadership with women. So many women have actually crafted a lot of who they are or who they're trying to be by what someone else has told them, by, you know, what uh, other people are being, by the very masculine definitions that have been, you know, created in, in all political, like political business and corporate arenas. There, we have been told how to operate and told who we should be. We should work really hard. We should exhaust ourselves into the ground. We should be mm -hmm service. We should give up our own desires. Like there's all these ways that we have been taught to operate. And so one of the first things we have to do, especially as women, is really get clear about who we are, what we actually want. You know, who, how do we best operate? What's our best cycle? What's our real capacity? Because sometimes we're all like always over capacity. So we're always giving more and doing more than we actually have capacity for. And we end up exhausted and burnt out. So it's really getting clear. It's like almost like an assessment of who are we actually and what do we actually want? And that's before we touch anything about our relationships with other people or who we're being in our business or who we're being in the world or who we're being on a platform. It's literally just all that self-reflection of who are we really? That's really where it starts. Mm. Well, when you look at people say you, you feel that they've got the weight on social media sometimes or people, people you really admire, I often hear people say that but they are so there and so huge and they've been doing it for 70 years and I'm here, I can't be. It almost feels sometimes maybe leadership feels so heavy, but it doesn't actually have to be. I feel like you were just mentioned either relationships, but also how we operate. I really like that as well because it brings it back to really basic things such as, mm. for example, I went to work for Four days a week and I'm going to talk about the opportunity of working like that because it's a lifestyle I can have and others do and, and it's not just about very big goals as well I think that is another really important piece of that and maybe that when it becomes 
really important to talk about it or even questioning leadership. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think uh, learning to operate and really learning to uh, operate in a way that is aligned with who we are individually, that's a key component of leadership. And that's not something that most people teach. I mean, most people teach leadership in terms of like, here's a, here's how everyone should be. And if you operate this way, you'll be a leader or, you know, here's what the real successful people are. So if you operate this way, you'll be successful. But in my experience, I mean, I've worked with thousands of people In my experience, everyone is very uniquely different. We have different cycles. We have different strengths. We have different gifts. We have different ways that we thrive and ways that we don't thrive. And if we don't design our leadership to support who we are and our greatest human potential, then we're not able to be the best leaders that we can, and we won't have the best impact that we can. Mm. Yes, absolutely. I love that. I was thinking about um, this big experience people have. And when I first in my life thought about leadership, it was only a quick little thought, actually. I didn't consider looking into this area, interestingly. And I actually did go to a workshop, leadership workshop once, and we were taught how to write PR releases, or first releases. <laughs> of course. Um, so it was all about wording and um, a lot of many big marketing words and how you style it. So it was very surface. Rather, nobody ever talked, of course, about the internal work and what's that looks like to each of us it was more about i think the perception of it which is interesting that that's the perception we have it's definitely something that needs to be done but i looked at the people who have been showcasing their leadership for so long and i did also feel at the time that they've probably done it for so many years so of course everybody now sees them as thought leaders for leadership and presenting leadership in their particular space and we admire them and how can we re- make that huge leap. And then I mentioned, um, or I heard you mention that you act as a leader before you even become a leader, or you act as a leader you want to be, but not pretend as one. It was really, it was really interesting, uh, mm. phrase you said. Could you, could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I'm not sure the reference point, but what I do believe is that you have to become a leader. Like, so it's not about the outside leadership. It's about the inside leadership. So it doesn't matter if you have any followers or any influencers or any people who, you know, are on your social media or anyone who wants to hear what you say or anyone who even knows you. Like, it doesn't matter. You have to step into your leadership first. You have to become that leader. And through that action, then you can create a platform or you can create a direction to channel that leadership through. But like real leadership, is where you have become a leader. And then, yeah, you're using a tool like social media or using a platform like, you know, it could be a political platform, it can be a corporate platform or a business platform. Those are all areas I've worked in. The thing is, is that the platform is nothing if you already haven't stepped into the leadership part. And so, so much of like the program where I'm working with women, the first thing I have to do is help them step into themselves, step into their power, step into what they believe, own who they are, own what they want. That's really the first step. Until until they become leaders, we can't even begin to work with a leadership platform Mm -hmm. because they don't know what that leadership platform will look like until they become the leader. That's right. And then you enter social media. For example, with um, a standpoint or um, perhaps an idea that you want to convey and you want to communicate now. And what if there is so much backlash? Or if there is, um, and probably not just social media, but I feel in person, people a lot of the times keep a lot of their opinions to themselves and sometimes not. And then on social media, there's so much more opinion out there. How do you navigate those things as well as a leader? So someone who's trying to convey a message. Yeah. Look, I I mean, I think there's a couple different perspectives around that. I mean, one is if you're really standing up in your power and you've got a strong opinion, especially as a woman, you're going to have haters. It's inevitable. And so like, you know, that's probably a good sign that it probably means you are actually stepping into your leadership. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's fine. It happens. It doesn't matter. The people who you have impact with, the people who you care about, they, you will reach them. And so to some degree, part of the self-development we have to do as leaders is be able to navigate that it doesn't matter what other people think about us, right? Like this is such a core part of the work that I do with women is that we have to stop caring what other people think about us. And when we do that, when we've really owned how awesome we are, who we are, 
and we're no longer affected so much by the validation outside of us, well, then you're more, you can more gracefully handle those situations, right? So you can ignore people, you can respond in a graceful way, you can, there's all kinds of options, but when we're triggered because we haven't done the internal work, then oftentimes we react in one way or the other. We have discouragement and, you know, we take it personally, which it's never personal. They don't know us, you know, or we fight back, right? And we can be very aggressive or we can be very angry and, you know, nothing's wrong with anger. You know, it's a whole nother conversation. But I think that it's great to be able to handle those kind of situations gracefully. And when we've done the internal work, we do. We do handle them like that. I do remember having many online conversations where somebody would criticize very strongly what I would have said. And I would usually catch myself, initial reaction would be the reaction I had. But I've noticed over time catching myself on, on sort of seeing what I felt. And just that second of stopping and looking at, oh, I'm not feeling this way. I didn't have to justify or explain it to myself. But it was really, oh, I feel this way. Oh, I'm offended that somebody's criticizing my particular sentence. Kind of stopping for a moment. And I've noticed that over time, repeating of doing that again and again made it a little easier. But over time, it does not feel that important anymore. Yeah. I yeah. Feel that it absolutely is true. I mean, it's, yeah. it's interesting, right? Because some people, they'll, they'll start out in some of my programs and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I can, I can never let anyone criticize me. Like, I'm so scared of rejection. I'm so scared of judgment. And of course, like judgment doesn't feel good. None of us like it. But mm -hmm. if we let that operate our leadership, if we let that control, if we let that manipulate our leadership, whether or not someone approves of us, whether or not someone likes us, then we're not really being leaders. And so leadership requires that place of being willing to stand your ground, no matter who stands with you. And ultimately what we find is when we're that strong, when we're really standing strong and true in what we believe and what we know to be true, so many people resonate with us. And that is where everything changes. But some people won't resonate with us and that's okay too. They're not your people. They're not the people that you need to impact. And so, you know, it's getting to that place, but I promise you there is this beautiful transition. We get to a place where it no longer matters. And I like that you mentioned that a lot of times people don't know us. I kind of forgot about that little piece though. It really gives me a bit more of understanding, maybe a bit more of compassion even. People actually don't, don't know us and if they haven't taken time to get to know us yet and they're reacting to something because of their own understanding of it and their own triggers. So I think it That's helps right. to remember that. It well. does help. Yeah. Mm. Look, having compassion for other people, if someone is reacting to something that you're saying, that's on them. You are never, ever responsible for someone else's reactions. Mm. They're reacting to something inside of them, their own triggers, their own feelings, their own experiences. And if they don't ask more questions and try to, you know, understand your point of view, well, they're just going to do their thing. They're going to blame. They're going to, you know, get angry. They're going to get upset. And, and that's really nothing you have control mm. over and nothing you need mm. to worry about. It's like, yeah. really? Because yeah. everyone feels different on social media. Um, yeah. I read a question in one of the groups that was actually devoted mostly to social media experts and different uh, managers and marketers. And I was asking, oh, sorry, I was replying to someone's question. They were talking about the social media. The question was whether social media made them a better human. And I thought, what an odd question. How cool is that? And the thread went ballistic. And people were saying, of course not. Or I've just realized that people are horrible. And it was also negative. And all the things that we're obviously just focusing on. And I thought for a moment, and I felt that the, the use of social media has always just been a tool for my work, but it opened up definitely doors into meeting other people or practicing things like that, practicing reacting differently or choosing to respond differently and learning that this is in fact not my responsibility how they feel. And those things did make me a better person. It was what I was focusing on. But I was fascinated to watch a whole huge thread of Facebook group where people told that they shared everything they found really bad about social media. And they were literally sharing just what they had personally had problems with. And it just was another whole encyclopedia of people's emotions. 
that reminded me how diverse we are, and that's the challenge. And, and I know you use social media a lot as well for, for showcasing your, your work and for really just having that voice and connecting with people individually and on the bigger scales as well. How do you find this working for you? And so how was the best thing about it? Maybe what's the worst thing about it? Maybe something that you find challenging as well in terms of showcasing leadership or maybe exercising leadership. Yeah, look, I, like you, I see social media as a tool. It literally is this, you know, ability for us to showcase your voice, just like you said, or showcase our services or whatever it is you're using social media for. So mm-hmm. I've always seen it as a platform for my voice, for my perspective, for the way that I see the world. Mm-hmm. And that's how I've used it. And so I'm very strong in my perspective. I'm very strong in my voice. And that's, that's really, I never ever think about what is someone going to say about my post? Like not ever. I literally put it out there. I don't care if anyone comments. I don't care if anyone likes it. I don't care if someone doesn't like it. Like it's never ever about that. And I think that's the transition that all of us as leaders want to make is that ability to stop caring how people respond because I don't need validation from the outside. I get validation from myself, right? That, that I trust who I am and I appreciate who I am and in all my weaknesses and all my failures, I'm not perfect in all of those ways. I appreciate myself. And so I'm not seeking that validation. I think a lot of people are seeking validation in social media. They're looking for people to love them. They're looking for people to tell them how great they are. They're looking for clients and whatever it is. And when we're attached to that outside validation, we're always setting ourselves up for failure. We'll twist what we have to say to try to please people or to try to make them like it better or try to to make our target market say yes. And, And when we do that in a way, we're being dishonest. And to me, leadership is about integrity it's about being honest about who you are and people resonate or they don't resonate they like you they don't like you they need what you have they don't need what you have it's like it's not personal it's just this tool to be able to put out who you are and look for those who resonate with you have you always had such clear kind of I guess perception of social or or any online tools so you have to develop that no, I had to develop it. So I hated just even a, even a few years ago, like, well, I'd say it's probably like three to four years ago. I hated social media. I despised it because I, th- I thought it was filled with dishonesty, right? So like probably a lot of the comments that you got, I thought it was filled with dishonesty. People were fake. I mean, having worked with thousands of businesses, I have seen the, the sort of gap between where businesses pretend to be and where they actually are, right? So many people, these millionaires, who claim they're millionaires and they're making hardly any money in the back end of their business. I've seen so much that for me, for so long, it was like, yes, it's just dishonesty. Plus I'm an introvert. So social media was really hard at first for me to get used to, but I made a deliberate decision a few years ago to embrace it as a tool to be able to say, okay, I'm going to use social media as my tool, the way that I want to use it. I don't have to be like anyone else. I don't have to do what everyone else is doing. I can just use it as a platform for my voice. And that's really what I've been doing for years. That is so helpful. It's one of the things that I talk about, and I think it's so important to literally make a choice of what it is for you, which sometimes helps for people to discern between what they were told it is for them. So maybe coming from that, I'm not using it, to deciding how you use it, sort of can you even have that transition. It's really interesting. A- any of your clients having similar struggle with social media when they don't want to use it? Oh yeah, M- most everybody. I mean, some people come in if they're if they're social media people, like they've mm-hmm. they've been using social media for a long time, or they're marketers, or you know they have some services that have involved that. They're more comfortable with social media. But you know, all my wellness practitioners, or you know, people who are not int- serious introverts, don't want to at all touch social media. Absolutely, and I teach them the same thing. It's a tool. I want you to experiment, but here's how. One of the you know, things I know that you and I have talked about before as well, because I know you agree with me, mm-hmm. is that social media, has, there's this illusion about what social media is for. 
So many people think they just need to throw out a ton of content and that that will bring them clients. And so a lot of people are misusing social media. I mean, it's social. The whole point of it is connections, relationship building, you know, being able to share who you are and what you're about. Like mm-hmm. it, there is an element of connection that's so important in social media. And we've really lost that over the last few years with the focus on content and just throwing things out at people. Like I'm just going to vomit on you until you finally comment by my services. That's mm-hmm. what a lot of people are doing. You know, that doesn't work. It's about sharing. It's about connecting. It's about communicating and it's a reciprocal experience. So I teach my clients that social media and the way to use that is about connection. It's about building relationships. It's about directly connecting with people to get clients. Mm-hmm. It's very different process than what most people are doing. And so you, A, don't have to be on social media all the time. B, you're not going to run yourself into the ground doing content. You know, C, it's not yucky or spammy or any of those things that everyone's uncomfortable with with social media because it's genuine. Mm. Please keep talking about that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's it's crazy, right? So important. And I think, you know, there's a really important piece to leadership that I think relates as well to social media. When we know who we are and how we best operate, we align everything to that. So, you know, that's how we be the best, you know, become the best leader, or that's how we're able to succeed in business, or that's how we're able to like navigate and find the best career for us. All of that is when we are aligning what we're creating to who we are. And so social media is one of those things where I see so many people trying to do social media in a way that is not aligned with their values, is not aligned to their natural cycles, to who they are, instead of using it as a tool to, to strengthen what you already have strengths in or to, you know, really share the gifts that you already have. Like it's, it's a tool that can be used in alignment with who you are, not pushing you so far out of your natural self or your essential self mm-hmm. that it becomes yucky and it becomes exhausting. Yes. I almost see it as a, having like a, a core that sort of you decide all the things like how you operate and what you need really and who yes. you are. And then you look at different tools, you want to put it on like a Christmas tree and social media might be one of them or might be not. But you'll sort of yep. stick it on. And you might not need it. And I think in this case, it's it's so neutral and just so much easier to me. I love that. Thanks so much for your wisdom. I really appreciate that. I think this is such an important element in business and life. To, to choose that leadership, to have that the custom aligned leadership. And it talks to so many other pieces. That's where I find it really important. It just talks to health and mental health and physical health. And it talks to families and it um, talks to your possibility or your opportunity to impact the world and then the family. And I think it covers so many important things. I love that. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much.